Hi guys, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Ryan D, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about captioning and accessibility today. So as you all probably know, accessibility is a major tenant here at Philly Cam. Not only do we care about making media creation accessible for anyone who's interested, but we also want to make sure the media you do create is accessible for anyone that wants to watch it. So a major part of media accessibility is captioning. Captioning is the small text, often at the bottom of the screen, that writes out the words that someone is speaking. Captioning is utilized by a ton of people, both within and beyond the deaf community. There are two main types of captions. There are open captions, which are burnt into the video, they live in the video, they can't be turned off. But they can vary in size, location, color, font, they can be really fun. And then there's closed captions. Closed captions, a viewer chooses to either turn off or turn on. I'm mostly going to be talking about closed captions and how you can submit those alongside your show to Debbie. That way, anybody who's watching your show on the channel can turn on captions and your show immediately becomes that much more accessible. There are a variety of ways to make captions for your show. You can do so by hand or by using software such as Premiere or YouTube. Now, in the Media Lab at PhillyCam, we have a software called Otter AI. Otter is great for making captions for your show with ease. And I can give you a quick peek into what that process looks like. First things first, you're going to want to make sure your show is completely finished before you start captions. If you start captions and then go back and make more edits, the words and text may no longer align and it might not make sense. So once you're completely finished editing your show, you can make a Media Lab reservation to use Otter. When you come in, make sure that you bring a copy of your show with you. So once you're here, you can ask the tech staff that is on site to log you into Otter, and you're going to end up with a page that looks like this. So now that I'm in Otter, I'm going to come in and I'm going to go up to the top right and hit Import. On import, I can either drag and drop my show, or I can browse files and select my show. Here, I'm using our most recent episode of Philly Cam Voices. As you can see, I have a pretty big file here. It's about two gigabytes, so it's going to take a few minutes to upload, but it shouldn't be that long, and if you have a smaller file, it'll be even faster. Once my file has finished uploading, it'll start transcribing. The whole process of upload and transcription shouldn't take more than about 15 minutes. Once Otter says that your file is ready, you have a great set of preliminary captions that you can totally use on your show and make it that much more accessible. Now, if you want to take it one step further and make sure that everything is accurate to what's being said, you can go in and you can actually edit the file. You can come up here and there's an edit button. And as you hit edit and you play your show, this highlighted text will follow along as someone's speaking. That way you can fix if there's anything that's not quite right, like, oh, that says voices with the lowercase v, but voices is the name of our show. So we like voices to have a capital V. So I want to make sure that I fix that. And as I go along, I can pick up on any issues, including I notice that Connie introduces herself and she says, I'm your host, Connie Kong. Except that's not how Connie spells her last name. So I can go in and I can correct her last name. This is great. You can go through the entire show. And if there's anything that just the software misheard, or it's a name that just gets misspelled, you can go in and fix it, and your captions will be completely accurate to whatever is said. Now, there's a bunch of other functions within Otter that you can totally utilize. You can identify the speakers. Like, I know that speaker one is Connie Kahn. Connie is the host for Voices this month, and so she speaks throughout the show a ton. Well, then I can go in, I can go through and identify all these other speakers. It's not necessary, but it might help you keep track. Once you finish making any corrections you'd like, you have a completely refined transcript. Now, we're going to take this transcript and we're going to turn it into captions. We're going to do so by coming up to these three dots in the top right, and we're going to choose to export it. There are a ton of options for exporting from Otter, but I'm going to focus on SRTs because those are the files we use for captioning. That will break down these big paragraphs into just a few words per line and keep track of where they are in time so that the spoken word and the text align. So I'll come over here to File Format, and I will choose SRT. These other options are good if you want to transcript, but an SRT is what we want for captions. I'll click here. I'll lose some options, but we're still left with a few, one of which is Show Speaker Names. If you went through and identified all of your speakers, and you want their name to show up every single time before they talk, you can feel free to leave this check. But you might not want that if you didn't identify them, so I'd usually uncheck it. You can leave ad line breaks. That just takes care of some extra work for you. Maximum number of lines and maximum characters per line just deal with how many words are on a single line. 
we can leave these in the default 2 and 32. The last thing you're going to want to do is come down and set your file name. It's going to automatically make your file name whatever your show file name was, and it's going to add this underscore otter underscore AI. I would recommend that you end up with your captioning file to be the exact same name as your show file. So I'm going to lose this otter at AI, and I'll just have voices73.srt. Now, when I export, it's going to tell me exporting, and it's going to ask me, do I want to allow downloads? If you already have downloads enabled, you won't have to worry about that. Now, when I go up to my downloads, I see that my final SRT file is there, which is my final caption file. So in my downloads tab, I can find it. I'm going to want to put that SRT file with my show file, whether it's on my hard drive or on my Google Drive, wherever you're storing it. And when you finally submit your show to Debbie, you're going to want to make sure you submit not only your show, but now your SRT file. Now that you have captions on your show, your show is that much more accessible to anybody who wants to watch it.